Without a doubt, there is no shortage of options if you want to buy silver bullion, all readily available in various different sizes, styles, and designs. But many of you are probably wondering why there isn't much of a selection of silver bullion options here in the United States of America. Well, in this video, I'll explain two reasons why that's the case as we explore. It is nice to have a variety of options for stacking. In fact, most of us uh, out there do stack a variety of different designs, whether it be from straight bullion pieces like the very popular Royal Canadian Mint Maple Leaf, or you can get sort of a better bullion type of object such as the uh, Australian Emu. There's a variety of different ways to be able to stack with just as much of a variety in premiums as well. So it just depends. In fact, there is a blurred line between stacking and collecting in that regard. And this is why I like to refer to pieces like this as better bullion. You know, typically these have fixed mintages, not necessarily rare or limited mintages, but some of these pieces, especially for the Perth Mint, are parts of a bullion series that they have with a uh, slightly higher premium than you would buy for other type of stacking coins. And then you have other particular countries that have uh, rotating designs every year, like in China. They have only one silver bullion coin, it is the Panda, but it has a rotating design, a different design each year on the Panda that shows up. So there's a multiple different ways to be able to buy it. It kind of keeps it fresh and keeps it exciting. We don't have that here in the United States. Now, there are other countries as well, such as in Mexico, where they have different sized silver bullion uh, products, such as one ounce, two ounce, half ounce, tenth ounce, even twentieth of an ounce. And they have five ounce options and ten ounce options as well, too. Or, I don't have an example here, but Armenia also has their uh, Noah's Ark coins that go all the way up to, I think, ten kilos in size. And of course, we know the Lunar Series, and they can go up to a variety of sizes as well, too, uh, in silver. So there's a lot of different varieties, not only in terms of separate coin series in bullion, uh, but also different sizes and different premiums, depending on what you're looking for. You know, the problem is here in the United States is the United States Mint's hands are tied, really, when you think about it. They can't do much. In fact, they can't do much of anything with regards to coins in general without the approval of the, of the Congress. The Congress is the one, is the entity that will provide legislation that gives them the authority to mint coins in Congress alone, especially with regards to silver. Now, gold, on the other hand, is slightly different. Uh, and, in fact, silver metals are even more different. And, of course, you might ask the question, well, why don't the United States Mint produce a silver bullion bar um, or, uh, or uh, other silver products that aren't, that aren't necessarily coins? They could do a silver metal as a bullion round uh, and produce, which would be wildly popular. You know, those are legitimate questions to ask. But the first reason is really, well, they are limited. They are limited by what Congress can tell them to do. And so far, only one time in history, and it may not be the last, as I think, according to legislation that has been written in the coming years, we actually may see other silver bullion products come out from the United States Mint. But the language is, I think it's kind of vague on it, and we don't know for sure. It just gives the option that these could be produced. Uh, in other words, it gives the Treasury discretionary option to make it produce. But under law, uh, in starting in, in 1999, uh, there could be, I'm sorry, starting in 2010, rather, there were bullion coins produced, quarters. In fact, this is uh, has a face value of 25 cents for this bullion coin, which is five ounces, 
of a very specific diameter and weight, five ounces, uh, which were very difficult to produce. These require German presses to produce and were very limited in sales. Uh, the market demand for these was not nearly as great, but they were bound by law to produce these every year uh, for the America the Beautiful coin series. And this one happens to be from Maine. And uh, this is uh, quite a beautiful piece, but it is very thin and it has edge lettering as mandated by law. And uh, But they were produced. Indeed, these were produced uh, and uh, they are bullion coins. It's the only time in American history where that has occurred. Uh, and and really, it was much more of a pain than was worth it for the United States meant to do, but they were mandated by, mandated by law to make that happen. Um, so that leads us to, well, the most popular silver bullion coin in the world. The American Silver Eagle. In fact, it is not only the most popular silver bullion coin in the world, it is the most popular bullion coin of any metal in the history of the world. There's no other coin that sells more than, than the American Silver Eagle. And this is the current iteration of it with the eagle that we can see on the reverse here. This is the most popular. In fact, the uh, there's very few times where the mintages are below 10 million uh, or below 9 million or what have you. In fact, uh, I'm looking here, 1996 has the lowest mintage and even then, it's still 3.6 million of these were produced. That's a lot of coins, but that's narrow enough of a mintage, small enough of a mintage, that the 1996 has become a sought-after numismatic coin now because it's, quote, limited mintage, even though 3 million is 3.6 million is a lot because uh, most of these numbers are well above that. In fact, the next lowest numbers are 4.6, 4.2, 4.8. But largely, they trade very much closer to uh, to 10 million. In fact, uh, in 2001, it was 9 million. Uh, 2002, 10 million. And we go through and we see that it's only increased, uh, which is pretty remarkable. After silver spiked and after the Great Recession of 2007, 2008, what did we see happen to the Silver Eagle? People flocked to Silver Eagles like crazy. In 2008, 20.5 million eagles were, were produced. In uh, 2009, 30.4 million. In fact, so much demand for the silver eagles occurred that year that they did not produce any proof silver eagles, uh, which uh, they're not mandated by law to do, but the United States Mint has produced those, uh, but they didn't produce any that year. And uh, the mintages only went up from there, so that in 2012, or 2011, there were 40.02 million silver eagles produced that year. But what happened? We saw increasingly higher mintages as time went on. In fact, uh, the record-breaking year was in 2013, where 42.6 million were produced that year. That's pretty remarkable when you think about it. That much, a dramatic increase, and that was the year this channel started, but that record was broken again in 2014 and then again in 2015 at 47 million coins produced in 2015. You get the picture. There's a lot of silver eagles produced every year and by far, far outweighs what the mintages are for uh, Canadian maple leaves, which pale in comparison. Uh, 2008, 7.9 million. And some of these other mintages have, have come out and I don't have some of these later mintages, but they still are much lower. But even the Royal Canadian Mints Maple Leaf is still very popular. It is the second most popular silver bullion coin out there. But the Royal Canadian Mint, I think, is amazing that they're able to keep up with the mintages of those and provide others, uh, other bullion coins uh, as well. But So they're limited. That's the first thing. But because of these very, very high mintages of these coins... Really, they don't have the resources. In fact, we saw they were way behind the last couple of years here with mintages because of the pandemic and whatever other excuses they would have. But they were very well behind just to keep up with the Silver Eagles. So time and resources to produce another bullion product is not needed, number one. 
because there's so much demand. And number two, they may not have the ability and uh, the facilities to make that happen because they have to use every resource they have for these bullion coins. And so with that being said, people are buying them and they don't need, they're making enough money on these coins for sure that they really do not need to produce anything else. And they probably really can't with their current resources that they have right now. So that's why the American Silver Eagle is the only option right now for stacking out there. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, I would like to see another type of bullion product produced by the United States Mint. I think it would be nice, but I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon unless it's mandated by Congress. And likely, Congress people will be advised not to do that to put further strain on the United States Mint. And we know that the quality of the United States Mint is lacking in their, in their collector coins in some aspects in some areas. And we know that in recent years, because of the demand, uh, the, these have started to milk spot. Uh, you're seeing milk spotting a lot more on American Silver Eagles these days than you have in the past. And why? Because they're rushing them through. And um, when they rush them through, they don't give the detergent a time to dry, so it gets baked in in the annealing process. And they're spit out, and they come out to us, and we see these spots on them. That's what causes milk spots. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.